universal shift in how policy decision is being made. You've all heard the phrase data science, but do you actually know what it means if you haven't formally been trained in it? Let's take a step forward. Have you heard the phrase economics and data science in one sentence? Does it sound overwhelming? Ask me. I teach it at ITU. In fact, I designed an undergraduate degree program, the first of its kind in Pakistan, I might add, that incorporates elements of data science in an economics program. So why am I talking to you about this? For the simple reason that we need to equip the future generation of homegrown policymakers to make more informed decisions. This is easier now, given our ability to analyze massive amounts of data in a shockingly short span of time. We are all data scientists in our own right, irrespective of our occupation or training. Heck, ancient Egyptians were data scientists when they used census data to enhance tax revenue for the state. And while I'm on the topic of taxes, let's do a quick show of hands. How many of you are tax filers? I'm going to quickly note this down and let the government know. But relax, I'm kidding. I'm a trained economist. That means that I have answers to important questions about your human capital, wealth, and income. What this really means is that I need to validate each answer with information and data. That is the only way folks understand what economists do and say. So while it's easier to say that income increases with education, I will be taken a lot more seriously if I say instead that the median income in the US of households headed by a college graduate are four times higher than that of a household that's led by someone who hasn't finished high school. That's an extremely powerful sentence. It's an extremely useful sentence. And this puts policymakers on a stronger footing when they advise subsidizing the cost of college education or warn against debilitating student debt. Can I say that Pakistan has enough well-trained economists who have access to such high quality data and can hence offer such policy prescriptions forward? No, on all accounts, no. So then we have a problem. And like most problems, the answer to this one too lies in education. There is a global recognition of the need to revamp how economics is thought and taught. Winners of the Leontief and Nobel Prize, along with leading academics of the world, are coming out in troves and saying, our curriculum and way of teaching economics is out of date. So these folks are collaborating across various international forums. They're rewriting theory, uh, they're revisiting theory, rewriting textbooks, and rethinking economics. I am taking this one step forward. I refuse to just sit and keep talking about the problem. I am trying to address the larger issues in economics by offering an undergraduate degree that is aware of these changes and debates. I think now is the right time to offer such a degree to our uh, future generations. At ITU, my team of innovators and I are blazing forward, trying to couple two seemingly unrelated fields by offering an undergraduate degree in data science with economics. So this degree not only teaches students about economics, it encourages them to critique it and carve a way forward while giving them the skill set that is contemporary, that helps them crack data, gives them the skill to do machine learning, identify patterns, and train algorithms to reach better and more efficient decisions. I think this is one way of ensuring that the future generation of policymakers are geared toward evidence-based policy and look beyond rhetoric. If policymakers who are usually trained in economics, or at least they should be, get things wrong, more of us could become or stay unemployed, end up paying way more for basic goods and services or be disproportionately taxed. I don't want to risk that scenario. And more so now that Pakistan has a demographic dividend, there is absolutely no room for error. So we are serious about our future generations and we are convinced that they need to be global citizens. Then we need to give them the contemporary education and a skill set that helps them adapt to an ever-changing job market both here and internationally. 
The fact that others in higher education are not thinking along these same lines rings alarm bells for me. But I'm in good company because MIT and LSE are offering similar degree programs reacting to the exact same things we are concerned about. Policy making and policy prescription in Pakistan has its own set of unique issues. But I'm going to talk about a few that are just the basics. Because here's the thing, if you fix the basics, you're very likely in the clear. Pakistani policies are inconsistent at best. They are reactive, and our policymakers don't do a terrific job when it comes to forecasting the economic climate. So you put it all together, and you have a case of uninformed policy with very dire consequences. Here's another thing about the Pakistani economy. The more things change, the more they stay the same. So I'm going to give you an example. And I'm really hoping that this is something that all of us can appreciate, irrespective of whatever our backgrounds are. In 2013, the then newly, when the then newly elected government came to power, Pakistan had $9 billion in forex reserves. That covers roughly two months of food imports. Five years. Five years of big promises, tall claims, and all weather friendship later, very recently, in 2018, a new government came to power. And at that point in time, Pakistan's foreign exchange reserves were, wait for it, exactly $9 billion. So why? Why does this keep happening in Pakistan? The short answer is my question to you. When was the last time Pakistan had a trained economist as a finance minister? And here's the longish answer. We are unequipped to manage our economy. We don't have enough people who understand the interlinkages and connections that make an economy tick. We don't have enough people who can make use of all the information and prescribe a way forward. Then it is no coincidence that Pakistan ends up importing policy from lenders. Let's make an additional observation. I don't think it's the best thing when a sitting government has to look at expats and ask them to come back and advise them on economic affairs. Don't get me wrong, I have nothing but respect for all of them. But here's the thing, if a few locally trained economists were so good, why weren't they the first preference? My point is plain and simple. We absolutely, positively need to have an endless supply of trained economists who are homegrown, home-based, and cognizant of local data and its issues. And my undergraduate degree aims to, aims to do just that. It aims to provide Pakistan with the economists that she needs and deserves. Offering, an, offering a new degree in Pakistan involves a lot of hard work and a very steep learning curve. My advice to fellow educators is that you must have qualified conviction for the degree. The fact that I was in a position to plausibly and positively affect economics was perhaps my biggest motivation. Add to that the fact that data science seems to be the most robust and buoyant job creator of the 21st century. But here's the thing, being just a data scientist is very quickly not going to be good enough. And that helped me pair data science with economics. Because if you look at job advertisements to data scientists, they require you to understand how businesses function. They require you to understand things about finance and economic theory and behavior. So if we are com committed to improving our lives, we need to use evidence-based policy making. And if you want the next generation to be cognizant of reality and challenges, we need to give them good education and a skill set that equips them to be leaders in thought and practice. And to do that, ladies and gentlemen, we need to rethink traditionally taught degree programs. If there's one thing that we've learned from the past, it is this. One must not commit the folly of operating in silos. One must greet the interdisciplinary and evolving nature of subjects taught independently in the past. Don't just push for higher enrollment rates. Ask for quality. Quality and quantity. 
push for something that puts us on the frontier of knowledge. I am doing just that by offering an innovative and one-of-a-kind degree in Pakistan. Thank you.